I am so excited to introduce our next guest. I am so thrilled that she is here. She is a philanthropist, a UN messenger of peace, mother, award-winning actor who is currently right now in one of the top Netflix films of all times, The Old Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Charlize Theron. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to redo the intro because of my lifelong lisp. I'm like, Netflix is the, 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 best, it's the best thing on Netflix. You better not touch that. That is what we love about you. So do not touch that. Whenever I see someone parody me, which I'm always like so excited that I, anyone would even know who I am, let alone parody yeah. me. It's always like the, you know, the craziest face on the list. And I'm just like <laughs> dying laughing. I'm like, it's true. Oh my God, the way you just did that face, that's amazing. If someone was gonna do you, they would just get taller and more beautiful and more like worldly and philanthropic and smart. It's true. No, that's not true. Once I did Monster, everything I did after that, they were like, oh, another ugly movie, another ugly movie. And, and SNL did a skit where literally it was just like me walking around like trying to like look like a baby's arm growing out of my head. <laughs> Just trying to be as uncomfortable looking as possible. And I was like, guys, I did one movie like that. Stop it. We have a friend in common, um, and you even mentioned this in your Oscar speech, this man, Steve Warren. Yes. I remember I said, my lawyer, Steve Warren. I heard this like snickering in the audience, like, wait, you can't thank your lawyer. And I was like, he's my friend. <laughs> he's amazing. And I don't have to tell you this. I mean, he's changed my life. I... I, I think all of the beautiful things that I have in my life today, Steve somehow has something to do with it. We actually have something in common too, which is I've heard you're like on, you know, a break from relationships. And yeah. I'm so in love with my children. I have this love in my life that's so impactful. And I've spent my life trying to figure out men for 45 years. I'm like, I'm tired, I'm bored. It's all about the kids. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely know what you're saying. And it is strange for people to kind of wrap their heads around it. I've been on a few like dates, but I haven't dated anybody um, for over five years. <gasps> um, Me too! Yeah, so we have a lot in common. So, I mean, I'm open when, when friends of mine are like, you should go on a date, we're like, you should meet this guy. Like, I'm always open. But it is like, I feel like I'm in a place in my life where you gotta come with a lot of game. Like not, not the kind of game that we think of, the kind of game that's like, my life is really good. So you better like be able to bring that and maybe better. Cause I just won't accept anything less. And my life with my children and with my incredible adopted family that I have around me, I, I don't long for that much. I don't really, long, I don't, I've, I, I can honestly say this on my life. I don't feel lonely. Once I had my children, it, it's not that it replaces something or that it makes you less interested in something else. Like I'm still like, I was just two seconds ago talking about a dude that I thought was really hot. Like I, like I'm still firing on all cylinders. I just, I think your priorities are in a place that is of high demand, right? Cause it's, it's, it's a lot of work to be a parent. And then part of that is at the end of the day, I get in bed and I go, oh my God, I wouldn't want this day to be anything different. Yeah. I always say I would want someone to be an addition, if not the equation and never a subtraction. That's, ex you said it, I did the poor man's d d uh, line of that. Thank you for, I'm gonna take that. I'm stealing that just so you know. It's for both of us since we're both on such a similar path. And Jackson is eight. Yes. And August is five. Yes. I have Olive, who's eight this month, and Frankie, who's six. Wow, we're so close. I know. I never realized our kids were that, like, aligned yeah. in ages. Yes, super, super close. I had an idea we were close, but I didn't know we were that close. Oh, well, gosh darn the pandemic. <laughs> I would be like, I, I, how are we getting our kids together when things ease up? 
I would love nothing more. I, I yes, the, more, the same year. Oh, please. I, and my kids, they, you know, it's so hard for kids with uh, the adjustments and, and God bless all of them for being as adaptable and sane as some of them are. I, I just, I, I, it makes me marvel at their capacity and adaptability. How are your kids right now? My mind is blown by that as well. I have to tell you, you know, there's a part of all of this that's so devastating, right? Like we are really truly living in a whole new world. And when I look at my children and how they're just adapting to it so well, this, you know, just the idea, like the other day I walked out of the house and I had to walk back into the house because I forgot my mask. And I realized my children don't forget their masks. They literally always have their masks on them. I'm like, I'm the one that always, like I walk out, I gotta go back in and get, they have just embraced that this is what their world is right now. And I, I have to say like, even the homeschooling, like when we went into that first lockdown, it was really, really hard because they're kids, right? And so they just don't fully comprehend, but by now they figured out, okay, this is what it is. And it's like, it's really different. Like they've kind of embraced this now and they, they still, you know, can share that they miss their friends and that they miss going to school. But at the same time, they're just not dwelling on it, which is just so incredible. It's like, they're just moving on with it.